Hi guys, welcome back to the shop and to my fellow Americans, happy Independence Day. Uh, I'm filming this on July 4th and uh, you probably won't see it until uh, a couple days later. But anyhow, I just wanted to uh, tell everybody happy Independence Day. And today I'm going to do a little plating. I've got some parts from the F7 that needs to be plated and also the 250MX. So I'm just kinda, I'm gonna work on them all, but I'm trying to keep them separate. The F7 stuff is the smallest batch, so I'm gonna do those first, and then we'll continue on with the MX stuff. There's not a lot, I have already done some of this, and uh, you know, you just always forget stuff, and I'm sure I'm forgetting stuff now and I hate dragging all this stuff out, but if you put it together without doing the, uh, the plating, uh, it just, when you compare it to new bolts or something, it just looks tacky. So in my opinion, you've got to do it, uh, but you really have to think about it, look at the stuff, plan it, try to get it all done at the same time, but we all know it's not going to happen that way. But I'm going to go over uh, my setup again. I'm not a professional at this. Uh, I'm sure, you know, I see people on YouTube that uh, they've got elaborate setups, uh, you know, a lot neater thing than what I've got. I just do this a few times a year and I just work out of a bucket and, you know, with a power supply and, uh, some copper wire and you know it's pretty basic stuff i get reasonable to pretty good results most of the time sometimes it just flops uh, it's it just has a lot to do with uh, i think paying attention uh, one thing is my heater is uh, well it just kind of goes <laughs> if you know what i mean so i've got to keep track of the uh, when I have it plugged in, it, it's got a rheostat, but it doesn't really work well. And I just, I'm too lazy to fix it, I guess. But you have to keep uh, tabs on your heater because you need to keep your solution at about 110 degrees. You know, anywhere from 100 to 110 seems to work pretty good for me. But if you let it, if you forget it and it goes and you've got it up to 200 degrees, all your parts are gonna be black or gray and it's, it's just a mess. And then you gotta wait on everything to cool down. So you've just gotta kinda of give it your undivided attention while you're doing this. So let me kinda of go over my setup again. And uh, like I said, this, this is not uh, the greatest setup in the world, but it works for me. So uh, let's get to it. Okay. Of course, the first thing you need to do is gather the parts you're gonna uh, you're gonna plate, and you need to sandblast them. If you want the uh, part to be shiny, like this bolt, you need to wire brush it or buff it with a uh, Scotch Brite wheel or something to bring out that uh, the shininess before you plate it. Otherwise, it's going to be a dull cadmium finish. And really what we're looking for, for the most part, is just the rust preventative, corrosion preventative that you get from the cadmium uh, parts. And, but you want nice appearance too. So, you know, just be careful and, and if you want things shiny, make them shiny. I'm told that there's other ways, some kind of a brightener. I actually do use a brightener. This is zinc brightener. Uh, from Caswell and you just replenish it as things are no longer coming out of your bath quite as shiny you give it a couple ounces and uh, you know that all comes back I couldn't tell you what goes into the bath I just know it's got to be right or it doesn't work and I've been using this for probably 20 years and it, it always works for me but if it quits being bright, then you have to put some brightener in it. Uh, 
Okay, I've got the bucket here. This is a, uh, I believe a three gallon one. This is my heater. And I've just, I made a, a way to adapt it here to my plastic bucket. Of course, you don't want the heater on the plastic, but you do want to be able to bring this up to 110 degrees. And I've got aquarium stones in here and you don't want them foaming. Actually, I've got these up a little bit high. I'll be turning those down. And you need a bar, and all this is is a piece of uh, copper tubing that I bent over on the ends so that I can hook, so it'll hook on my bucket, stay on the bucket, and I can hook my leads up to it. And these are your uh, anodes, your zinc anodes. And I've got four in here. You don't need four. You can probably, you know, you should be able to get by with two. But it, four seems to work good for me. Uh, I've got a power supply. I believe this is a 25 amp. Uh, you don't need this. You can run from a battery charger or a battery. Uh, if you get the book on it, they talk about uh, using light bulbs to lower your voltage and all that stuff but it's much easier to control it with a power supply and i normally what i can fit in my bath unless it's big items like these bolts i try to run mine at uh, 2.3 and 0.5 so your your voltage is about 0.5 and your amps is at about 2.3 that seems to work good for me. Uh, I've got an aquarium pump, like I say, it's sitting here running. And you need a way to plug in your heater, your power supply, and your aquarium pump. So really that's, uh, that's a setup. Uh, I come off of the uh, power supply, the, the positive lead goes to the anodes which is right here and i just connect these all these anodes in series as i go around my bucket and then the negative wire goes to the bar right up here okay so that's that's your setup and all the parts that you hang you always hang them with copper wire and that's what this is what i get i just go to the hardware store and you get different thicknesses or whatever, but you can use and reuse. These are all used ones. Uh, I'll, I'll use them until they start breaking on me and then I'll put, I'll replace them. But before you start anything, you want to, you want first to prep your parts, sandblast them, bead blast them, uh, wire wheel them, scotch bright them, do whatever you got to do to get them clean then they go over here in what uh, Caswell calls calls uh, calls their SP degreaser and I've got my F7 parts in here now getting degreased and it's a real high detergent and you want that at about uh, 100 degrees or so so I, use, I just use a hot plate and all these temperatures I just run around with my little temperature gun checking to make sure my temperatures are where they need to be so you need that's your first step and once you pull them out of there i've got a bucket here of distilled water you just dip them in that then you come over and you want to make sure you wear gloves uh, to protect yourself of course but also you do not want to get uh, your fingerprints or oil on any of your parts that you're going to plate because they just won't plate there so be sure to wear your gloves and uh, then when it when it comes out of the bath the first thing you're going to do is come over back to the distilled water dip it again to wash that off and then you're going to let it dry and then just separate those parts and go on about another load so I'm going to go ahead now and do my first load with the F7 parts that I've got in the SP degreaser. Okay, again here, I'm just going to come over and check my solution. And I'm at about 106 degrees. 
So I plugged, just plugged in my heater and I'm gonna wait until that gets up to about 110, 111 degrees. And then I'm gonna pull the plug on it. Cause if I walk away and do something, this is just how I am anyway, I will forget about it and it'll be smoking over here. So you just, uh, you've got to be careful or at least I do. Okay, we're about where we need to be. So I just come over and unplug it. And we've still got our aquarium pump. That keeps everything agitated. What it really is for is to keep the particles that come off of your anodes suspended in the solution so that it will plate. But it also uh, doubles as a way to aerate, move the water around or the solution around so that it's uh, uh, a constant heat throughout the solution. Okay, so I come over, I'm pulling out my parts. You can get these little baskets on eBay, that's where I got it. And then you can just dip your parts in your, your uh, distilled water. And that's what we've got. And we'll bring those over to the table here and we'll dump them out. And now is the time we need to start putting things on wires. And you can be creative about this. Uh, you know, you, you can get several things on them, on one if you, if you really work at it. Uh, on this, something like this, bolt or something like that, I just wrap it a little bit, pull it up, and go ahead and put it in the solution, hang it over the bar. And the same with washers. Uh, one way that I do a lot, if I'm doing a lot of washers, I just make little steps for them. You know, such like this. As long as they get uh, the amperage, goes through them, uh, you just hang them, do whatever you got to do to get the job done. Okay, I've got everything hung. I was able to get everything on the bar for the uh, F7. And now I just come over and turn my power supply on. It'll come up and I'm at about 2.3 on my amps and about point, uh, Four or yeah, point four on the voltage. So that's probably going to be okay. It's it's hovering right there at four to five. So it's it's okay. So on these parts, how long? Yeah, you know it just depends. Uh, most of these parts probably a half hour. Uh, the big parts like the the big uh, swing arm bolts and the axle bolt and maybe the uh, uh, brake lever there maybe 40 minutes so it it's just uh, it's up to you you've got to just do some trial and error on it okay let's take a look at some of this stuff Some of them do get hung up, so you gotta watch that. So, then I'll just take these over and we'll dip them. And then I like to bring them over and You don't have to do this, you can just let them dry, but I like to uh, use a little compressed air and dry them off real quick. Oops. And you drop them on the ground and get them all dirty.
And I have to say that if you're going to chromate them at all, you need to chromate them at this point. Let me finish getting them out of there. Okay, so there's what I needed to finish, hopefully, to finish up the F7. And they're looking pretty nice. Uh, could be, you know, you could make them shinier if you shined anything up, but I didn't shine any of this stuff up. It's, it's okay the way it is. So the big deal there is you've got your corrosion preventative on there again. So uh, the seat pins, uh, keepers, I believe these are something with the uh, speedometer and uh, tachometer and the cable uh, supports there. And of course this is a plug for the uh, spare spark plug hole. And these are something for this stuff, I think. But anyhow, that's, uh, that's everything that I know of at the time for the F7. Okay, guys, that's uh, kind of the, the uh, batch that I'm doing today. Uh, all this is for the F7. This is for the, the uh, 250MX that we're working on. And pretty happy with it. While all that was going on, I cleaned this uh, hub up and got it uh, kind of ready to put back together. And I built a uh, plug for the speedometer. Just uh, did a little tree panning here to uh, uh, make a groove for the O-ring. And that will just push down in there and uh, then uh, put, put a clip on it. A lot of times on these bolts, you have to go back and take some 400 grit sandpaper. And I just put these in the lathe and then run it just to take the, the top off of it. Uh, it doesn't really matter because I usually, uh, I put grease on these before I stick them in. Really the whole reason about uh, plating them is to plate the ends more than anything and what's sticking out. But you know, a lot of times, you, you know, this is a, uh, it does add uh, some thickness to the product. So sometimes on the threads, you have to chase the threads and whatnot and the nuts and the bolts and that sort of thing. Uh, sometimes you don't. It just depends on how, how loose they are. But anyhow, just another little short video. Uh, some people are interested in this. Like I said, I'm not a a professional at it but I get pretty good results and uh, you know that's what it's all about it's just you just don't want to put all that stuff back in there that's uh, that's rusty and crusty and and looks terrible and so much of it you just can't you either can't find or it would just be cost prohibitive to uh, to buy it new so there you have it guys, just a little short video to uh, show the, the plating process again. Uh, kind of without going too, too deep into it, it's, it, it's not a, a complicated thing. Uh, the kit that I use comes from Caswell and uh, they're, you know, the stuff just works. You know, you can get a kit from them and you can do this kind of stuff yourself. And like I say, you can, uh, you can use a battery charger or a battery, or uh, you can get you a little power supply. Uh, I've got a couple different power supplies. I really like the, the, I think it's a 25 amp one that I've got. And it just, it just works good, simple to use. So hey, thanks for going along on the ride. And we'll see you next video.